All right. Well, kia ora koutou katoa, and welcome to everyone here at the Arise Centre. Can you join me in welcoming every campus and location of Arise today as we connect together from Whangarei, Hamilton, up in the Kapiti Coast. Don't forget Palmerston North, of course, over the hill in Masterton, uh, here in Wellington, and in the South Island. Uh, this week, actually, Selwyn and Canterbury and Christchurch are joining together in Canterbury, and uh, Dunedin having a great day as well. If you're recently joined Arise, you, I'm sure, have found a great community wherever you are, but you're actually part of one big church Fano across the country. So one more time, why don't we welcome everybody? Actually, yesterday we celebrated my granddad's 90th birthday in Christchurch, uh, and uh, it was an amazing time. Just I was so deeply impacted. But we had family come from around New Zealand, around Australia, uh, others sending messages from around the world, and it reminded me what extend, the beauty of extended family, you know? Just those little unique differences and the things that people do in their home and in their neck of the woods. But when we get together, we're whānau. And that's what Arise is like. It's awesome what happens in Whangarei. It might be a little bit different there in Palmerston North. But together, we are Fano, and it's a beautiful thing. We're going to uh, begin a series today on the peace of God, a three-week series. But before we dive into the Word, I, I want us to pray as a church I want us to um, step in as a church family into the gap and intercede. I think as we begin a series on peace uh, and we're going to dive into what is the peace of God, what does the Bible say, how do I attain it for myself? We've got incredible preachers around the country for the next few weeks. It would be remiss of us to not acknowledge what is happening around the world and in particular in Ukraine and in the Middle East. So we're going to pray as a church and here's what I want to ask, not Ben prays and everyone listens, but we pray, arise praise. So actually right now, can we jump to our feet just for one moment? And uh, we're gonna agree together. We're gonna pray for the peace of Jesus Christ, the peace of Jesus Christ to reign around our globe and particularly in these conflict environments. We're gonna pray for every person caught in the midst of it. It's people that matter the most to God's heart, the people. So come on, church, why don't we engage in prayer? Why don't you lift your faith? Why don't you lift your hands? And God, we stand in the gap today. We come before you, and we know you are the God of peace. Jesus, you are the Prince of peace. So we ask right now, Lord, that your peace would reign around our globe. We ask for your peace to move in the Middle East. God, we ask for your peace to reign supreme in Eastern Europe and in Ukraine. God, that your will would be done. Your sovereign will would be done. God, we lift up every person, every child, every family, every person caught in the midst of conflict, and we ask for your covering. We ask for your protection. We ask for your lifting up, for your restoration. God, we ask for, for the, the way to be parted, for your aid, for your, 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 your meeting of needs to move in these places. God, we ask for your wisdom to be poured out on global leaders. God, that people would know uh, your will, your word, and God, that decision makers would follow your lead in your mighty name, we pray. As a church family, we lift it up before you in Jesus' name. We all said, amen. 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 Thank you, church. Why don't you grab a seat wherever you are? It's going to be good to dive into this series. been looking forward to it. It actually has uh, been months of percolating this series on peace, and I think it's a great opportunity for us. Uh, I actually want to take the, op the moment to say as a church, is, this is a great season, a great series to be inviting friends to, to be inviting family members to, to be inviting uh, workmates to, because I believe, as we're going to dive into today, that our world is in desperate need of peace, and that isn't only in war zones, that's in hearts and minds, in your workplace, in your neighborhood, in our families, people need the peace of God, and as I said, in every location for the next few weeks, incredible preachers in the morning services, and so why don't we look for an opportunity, why don't you pray this week, God, who would you have me invite to a service and let them experience the peace of God, but today, my message is entitled, Peace Be With You, taken directly from the words of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to read from John chapter 20 in a moment, and it's my prayer that for you personally, in your home, for us as a church family, for our nation of Aotearoa, New Zealand, or wherever you're tuning in from online today, that peace would be with us. It would be our testimony 
that we would know the peace of God for ourselves and we would bring the peace of God to our world. So let's read today, John chapter 20, starting in verse 19. It says, that Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors because they were afraid. They were without peace. Jesus had recently been crucified. At this point, they didn't know of his resurrection. Let's carry on reading. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them, and he said, peace be with you. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and in his side. They were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. And again, he said, a word for every person today, every disciple, peace be with you. As my Father has sent me, so now I am sending you. And he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. I don't think anyone here needs convincing that our world is in desperate need of peace. I think that for many of us, we would put our hand up immediately and say, I need peace. You and I need the peace of God. There's so much contention in our life, so much angst, even in, amongst friends over simple things like Rugby World Cup finals. I said I wouldn't mention it, and there I go. <laughs> but even in more meaningful things, there's angst, there's worry, there's fear, and it has an impact on us mentally, physically, relationally. Relationally, we need peace in our families, in our workplaces, in our communities. We need peace of mind in our thoughts. We need peace of heart in our emotions and feelings. We need peace in relationships that, that they would flourish, that we would lift one another, not, not tear down or fear one another. We need peace in workplaces and homes. We need peace between Nations, our world needs peace. And I want everyone at Arise to hear today that I believe that peace is God's plan. Peace is God's plan. And very simply, we can remember that the Bible says in Romans chapter 14, verse 17, that the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. We just concluded a series in October about joy. We've had series through the year teaching on righteousness, becoming like Christ, living for Christ, what it is to make Christ the center of our life. And, and I reckon we'll never stop preaching on righteousness, peace, and joy because that's the kingdom of God. And I don't know about you, I pray, we pray, Jesus taught us to pray, oh Lord, let your will be done. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So when we pray, let your kingdom come, we're praying, God, let your sovereignty reign, your plan be outworked, your will be done, yeah. and his kingdom is righteousness, people living right before God, yeah. peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Peace is God's plan. So much of our world, our life, is robbing us of peace, and we know that 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 shouldn't come as a surprise to Jesus' followers. He taught us, John 10, 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And so what things is he trying to steal, kill, and destroy? He's trying to take away the aspects of the kingdom, like peace, like joy. He's trying to rob us of them. But I guess I want us to also be encouraged. This isn't a new phenomenon in the 21st century. Consider all through Scripture, Noah was pursuing peace and lacking peace. Moses ran to the wilderness because he was so tumultuous inside and thought he had failed. He was pursuing peace. Elijah got to a point where he was so broken that he said, God, take me. Based on the words of a few people, he needed peace. Jonah needed peace. Jeremiah needed peace. Job needed peace. Yeah. King David needed peace. We all need peace. And when we read in John chapter 20, if we consider the state of the disciples in that moment, Jesus had just been crucified, their hero, their leader, their rabbi. So their world was shaken. Things were not going as they had hoped. Their hopes were dashed. They were fearful. They were probably considering, are we next? Will I be strung up on a cross next? That's a very real consideration for where we find the disciples in John chapter 20. They'd been ridiculed. They'd been persecuted. They'd been maligned. Some had run away and denied Christ. I'm sure there was confusion and fear, anger and sadness racking their mind and their, and their heart. I'm sure they were overwhelmed. I'm sure they were emotionally and mentally battered. I'm sure they were saying things like, this is not 
how it was supposed to turn out. And maybe that resonates with people here today. Maybe that sounds familiar. I'm thinking about business owners I know in our church who currently are having sleepless nights because of the uncertainty on whether you'll make payroll in the next few weeks. And you started this business to bless people and now you're concerned, how am I gonna pay people? I know of people in the church, parents who are lacking peace as you worry about your teenagers and the decisions they have made and are making and you're, you're yearning for peace about that. I've got other people in mind in church who are concerned about your own job and where things are heading and, and, and that's causing you to lose peace. So for wherever you're at today, and whatever your journey has looked like, and however long you've been a disciple and follower of Jesus, I believe that the words that he said to those disciples in that room, he says to us today, peace be with you. Peace is available. That's really what I wanna land most today, to begin our series, that people would have a revelation and understanding, a belief in our heart, that peace is available and attainable for you because everything in our world might be screaming, you'll never have peace, you can't have peace. Look at what's happening around you, look at what's happened in your family, your business, your finance, everything's trying to rob you of peace. But I stand on the Word of God and my King and my Savior and my Lord and my leader, He says, peace be with you. It's available today. I know you might be struggling to believe that, but it's the promise of Jesus. He is the source of real peace, true peace. Peace that doesn't deny the storm that might be raging around us, but is able to sleep in the midst of the storm. Peace be with you. Here are some more words from our Savior, our King, our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is the gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled and don't be afraid. If you're struggling to believe that today, to receive that today, to hear that today, maybe you're saying my life is so full of turmoil, my mind is so messy, my home is so chaotic, my news feed is so divided. I'm not denying those storms. I'm not denying that our world seems full of anger and revenge, but I'm saying that in the midst of it, because of Jesus and his cross, peace yeah, yeah. is available for you. He understands what you're walking through. He understands our storm. He understands the pain in our mind and the turmoil in our heart. And he still says, peace be with you. See, I think one reason it's difficult for us to believe that peace is available is because we spend our life trying to pursue peace from all manner of sources. I don't know about you, I certainly have. I've tried to find peace through relationships, reliant on other people. We try to seek peace through career or business or financial security. We seek peace through comforts like food, <laughs> gaming. We seek peace through substances to try and numb and neglect feelings that are overwhelming us. We seek peace through experiences to try and just forget our normal for just a moment to see if that will bring us peace. We seek peace through physical activity and habits. We seek peace through politics. We seek peace through trying to seek power. If I'm in control, maybe I'll have peace. And any leader in these rooms around the country today will say, <laughs> <laughs> and power might bring you less peace. See, the thing is, we seek peace from many, many places, and, and at times, to a degree, these things could give you peace. We need good holidays. We should eat well. We need to enjoy our time with friends and family, have good relationships, and to a degree, they can bring some peace. But here's the challenge in a fallen and broken world. These same sources that we pursue peace can be the same places that cause our lack of peace, like relationships and career and food and games and substances and experiences and politics and power. The same things we're relying on in our worldly seeking of peace can cause our disquiet, our anxious thoughts, our fretting, our fear. <laughs> 
So no wonder Jesus says, don't be troubled or afraid. I give you a gift that the world, all of these things cannot give you. This gift of peace. It's only available through him. Maybe that sounds too simplistic for someone today. But I don't know what else to say. That's what the word of God shows us, and that's my testimony. The more I try to seek peace in anything other than Jesus, the more I may have it for a fleeting moment, and then my anxious thoughts come back, my disquiet comes back, my messy mind comes back. But the more I pursue peace from the Prince of Peace, it never runs dry. Never runs dry. How do I know this? Why do I believe this? Why do I believe peace is available? And why do I believe that it's not only available, but that we have then the opportunity to bring the peace of Jesus to our world? Because because that's that's what the, the scripture teaches. Remember, as I mentioned, after the death of Jesus, the disciples were in this room, yet he arrived twice, he said, peace be with you. Then he called them in preparation to send them out. And he breathed upon them and said, have my Holy Spirit. And someone needs to know today that the Holy Spirit was not restricted to a room in first century Israel. The Holy Spirit is available to you and me in Whangarei, Hamilton, Palmy, Kapiti, Wellington, Porirua, Masterton, Christchurch, Selwyn, Dunedin, and any other place that his people would go. The Holy Spirit is available. So if the Holy Spirit's available, peace is available. And then we read that they were filled with joy. And after the book of John, we start to read in Acts how bold these people became. We were reading how fearful they were. Now they're full of boldness and courage. You can't be bold and be lacking in peace. If I don't have peace, I can't find boldness. So something happened for these men, these disciples where they received something from God that they could not get from this world, and they went out, and for centuries since, the world has been turned upside down because some bold, peace-filled believers of Jesus. So I'm looking forward to the testimony in Palmy, and I'm looking forward to what's going to happen in our capital city and what's going to happen in Christchurch in Dunedin when some peace-filled followers of Jesus start carrying this peace. But if you're here today and you're saying, okay, how do I do it? How do I receive the peace? We must turn to Jesus. Don't look for peace in anything else. Receive the Holy Spirit. Turn to Jesus. It's the only way that we'll know real peace. Real peace that that the Apostle Paul said transcends our understanding. It's not natural. It's not rational. The The same verse talks about how this peace will guard your heart, guard your mind. Remember, that's Philippians 4, verse 7. He wrote that in a dungeon. We talked about that uh, in a service a month ago. Written in a dungeon cell, he knew if I just get my peace from Jesus, I can withstand the storm and I can make a difference for others. That's about acknowledging who is really king, who is really sovereign in my life. Because all those other things I read, let me go back, relationships, career, comfort, finance, substances, experiences, politics, power, If we make any of them king, then we come under the reign and sovereignty of them. But if we make our Lord Jesus king, we come under his sovereignty. And if you can hark your mind back to Palm Sunday in April, we talked about how if Jesus is king, his kingdom is a kingdom of peace. His kingdom is a kingdom of peace. So I've got to stop looking for peace in any other sources and turn to him. It is available. And then... I can be a bringer of peace. See, I believe that Jesus declared to his disciples, peace be with you, because he was also about to send them out. And he wasn't just saying, this peace is for you and you alone. Be with you. Take it. Carry it. Bring it. And I just wonder what the testimony, the kingdom impact could be if every member of a rise church was a carrier of God's peace how different your homes would be, how different our workplaces would be, how different our nation could be if we would bring peace. 
Last night, we were at a big fireworks display, and uh, our youngest daughter, Nora, she had a sparkler. She was so excited, and she was waving it around, and her one was lit, and it was going. And someone said to her, hey, can I have some of your fire? Her, her, her sparkler wasn't going. So she simply said, can I have some of your fire? And I just had this thought in the moment, people are in your workplace, in your home, in our communities, saying, can I have some of your peace? Can I just have some of your peace? I can see that you've got it. You're, you're sparkling. You're lit up. I know that there's challenges in your world, but you've still got peace. Can I have some of your peace? Imagine if we could be carriers of peace. Peace be with you so you can bring it to your world. Again, that aligns with Scripture. Luke 10, Jesus is preparing his disciples. He's giving them tools. He's giving them instruction. He's about to send them out in pairs to go and do ministry in towns and cities. And one of the important things that he says is whenever you enter someone's home, first say, may God's peace be on this house. If those who live there are peaceful, the blessing will stand. If they're not, that blessing will return to you. Return to you means that you had it. You have peace. But he's preparing us as disciples that wherever you go. Here's a question today. How are you going to approach work on Monday? How are you going to enter school or university this week? How are you going to go into any meeting or into someone's home this afternoon? Are you going to be carrying tension, fear, anxiety? Are we going to be disciples from John 20 verse 19 or John 20 verse 22 where we were fearful and afraid and that's what we carry into every environment or after receiving the peace of God, receiving the Holy Spirit, acknowledge, I come and I declare peace upon this building. I declare peace into this workplace. I declare peace into this relationship, this whānau, this marriage. I bring peace. I thought of someone who may be in church today and you're here, but your spouse is not. And that is a point of conflict. Rather than head home and tell them about how good the preacher was, how much they should have been there. Just bring peace. Just head home. I bring peace. Whatever that might look like in your home. Second example, and and here in Wellington today, Pastor Chris has already actually shared from the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew chapter 5. I didn't realize he was going to do that. But there's another moment in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, where Jesus is teaching to these crowds. It's what we refer to as the Beatitudes. And he says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Peacemakers, bringers, carriers. People who actually make peace where there's conflict, where there's turmoil, where there's tension and contention. Those who want to be called children of God, we must commit to bringing peace. And that might actually be a surprise to a few Christians around the globe at the moment. Because I don't know about you, sometimes in 2023, I mean, we can just have a quick look online. You might feel that those who profess to be children of God, followers of Jesus, are not peacemakers. They're turmoil makers. They're argument starters. <laughs> I read about this beatitude in preparing for this message from, from uh, Brett Berger with a Master's of Theology. He did some study around the beatitudes, and he said, Many affirm this blessing of peacemaker with their lips, but when tumultuous times come, they tend toward the pragmatism of fighting. I was challenged. What's my go-to? Peacemaking or argument winning? Peacemaking or point making? As children of God, as followers of Jesus, we have a heavenly responsibility that I will be a bringer of peace in our families, in our workplaces, in relationships, in our environments. So here's another challenging question for each one of us. Am I a peacemaker? Am I a peacemaker? See, for many of us, we've actually been discipled in the ways of the world. And and when it comes to conflict, the world would teach you either fight or you avoid. You fight or you avoid. You dig in and make your point or you just dig your head into the sand and pretend like nothing's happening. And neither of those are making peace. 
Neither of those are God's plan. A peacemaker is not passive. It doesn't mean just turning a blind eye to tension and conflict. It's not a cop-out. A peacemaker actually requires something of us to be a peacemaker. It requires intentional action. A peace, as peacemakers, we are called to pursue personal peace, to work for relational peace, and to advocate for societal peace. To pursue personal peace. That's what we talked about for the first half of this message. That I would turn to Jesus. That I would not tolerate the ways of this world and just say, well, this is going to be my lot in life. I'm going to be racked with confusion and fear and worry. No, I'm going to listen to the words of my Savior. I'm going to come into line with His kingdom. I'm going to receive the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to be a person of peace. We turn to Jesus. The psalmist wrote, the Lord gives His people strength and He blesses them with peace. So I've got to pursue personal peace if I want to be a peacemaker. I've got to work for relational peace. That means helping people reconcile. That means helping people resolve when there's tension. It's actually quite countercultural these days. The discipleship of the world says, pick a side, choose your camp, dig in, be right. But the Bible says in Romans 12, do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Oh man, do all that you can is not turn the blind eye. It's not like, that's so awkward. Hopefully it'll go away soon. (laughs) It's, It's to address issues with love and grace. It's to be willing to be a mediator. I always believe that a, a picture One of the reasons of all the horrific ways that God could sacrifice His one and only Son for us, a crucifixion, a cross, just this picture of arms open wide, trying to bring people together, trying to say, you are welcome here. Jesus said, we've got to take up our own cross. We've got to live like Him. We have a part to play. So we pursue personal peace We work for relational peace. And I believe we must advocate for societal peace. We must refuse the cultural demand to polarize, choose a camp, and get stuck in. Instead, as children of God, we pray for peace. We celebrate when there is peace. And we try to bring constructive means for people, nations, communities, groups to be at peace peace. The writer of Romans continues and says, let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace. Our world is in desperate need of peace. And the cool thing is that we have an opportunity to bring it. Peace be with you so that you can bring peace to a world that so desperately needs it. Worship teams, why don't you come and join me wherever you are today? A few practical things I was thinking about. What does that look like? Looks like shutting down gossip in your workplace. Looks like having phrases up your sleeve like, oh, hey, I, I don't think I need to hear about that. Have you talked to them about that? Looks like... uh Looks like encouraging people to sit down across tables and resolve and hear one another. It looks like not commenting sometimes on Facebook. (laughs) It's real practical stuff. It looks like when Jesus was teaching and he said, when someone asked for your jacket, maybe give them your shirt as well. Turn the other cheek, take a low road. See, as I wrote those down, I was like, oh. Sometimes I feel like, Jesus, are you asking me to be a doormat? No, he's not. (laughs) Not for being trampled on and, and stood upon. But if the doormat's purpose is to welcome people into the home, sure. If the doormat's purpose 
often in a home, says, welcome, hi am I. Glad you're here. If the doormat's purpose is to help people find peace, <laughs> peace be upon this house, I'm willing. Just want to reiterate, being a peacemaker doesn't mean head in the sand. It's going to require something of us. We're going to make every effort, the Bible says. Oh, what's on the other side of that? People who right now, their mind, their heart, their relationships are so full of angst and turmoil because they don't even know that it's available. They don't even know it's available. But a conversation with you this week, a prayer from you this week, the example of peace on you this week, oh, what a difference that could make. Disciples are sent out, and as you enter this environment, declare into this place, peace be upon you. Oh, as a carrier of peace, I want to bring some of the kingdom here to Wellington, there to Dunedin, into Palmerston North, into homes, into Fano, into family, into, into workplace. I want to bring just the peace of the kingdom that I can bring. The kingdom of God is peace. Before we conclude our services today, I guess I want to circle back to the beginning. Say that peace is available. Peace is God's plan for you. Peace is attainable. For the disciples in one of their most fearful and confused moments, they didn't have to do anything. They just had to receive Jesus said it twice, peace be with you. And then he breathed the Holy Spirit. So in a moment, I want to pray for anyone in any location. And look, thousands of people gather this morning. Maybe it's one person. I hazard a guess there's probably a few more. But first and foremost, before we can be carriers of peace into our world, we need to receive the peace of Jesus into our heart. We stand in every location right now. See, I want to share with you that this is my testimony. I know this to be true, not just from the, the study of the Word, but from the experience of my heart. There have been moments in the last two years that I've been more overwhelmed than I've ever experienced in my life. Never had moments like it, short of breath, sobbing uncontrollably head physically throbbing because you can't in, in your mind find any clarity. <laughs> Sleeplessness. I don't struggle with sleep. You can ask Amy. I can go to sleep like that. Nights on nights. Sleepless. Fret, fretting. Fearful. But my testimony is that I've also never experienced the grace of God like I have in the last two years. I have never. And I've been following Him for decades. Peace that has really transcended my understanding. Because in the natural, I can't work it out. But in my heart, oh Jesus, you're good. Oh Jesus, you're all I need. Oh, you are my source of peace. I haven't got any magic formula. I'm no more special than you. Sometimes all I could muster was just say Jesus over and over and over and over and over. Sometimes I couldn't say it, so I'd use the gift of Spotify, find that song, Christ is my firm foundation, repeat. Christ is my firm foundation, repeat. Presence of God, receive the Holy Spirit. Just like that room in John 20. It could be the Aurora Center today. It could be a room over there in a high school and mastered it. Receive the Holy Spirit. Experience His peace. Turn to Him. Across every place, can we close our eyes? Can we bow our head? I want to pray for any person right now who needs the peace of Jesus Christ to reign in your heart, to reign in your mind. I believe this is going to be a significant breakthrough moment for many people right here, right now. Maybe you're online today. Maybe you're in your bedroom. That room can be a 
the dwelling place of the Spirit of God and you can receive peace. Maybe you're in a hospital room and you are gonna receive the peace of Jesus Christ and it's gonna pour out across that ward. So wherever you are, with every head bowed, with every eye closed, if you're in any location right now and you wanna receive the peace of God, receive the Holy Spirit, why don't you lift a hand in faith to Him right now, to our King, to our Lord, as we step again into alignment with His kingdom and His sovereignty. And God, I pray with faith, knowing that You are good and You are faithful. God, we ask that Your kingdom would come on earth. Your kingdom would come into hearts and minds right now. And Your kingdom is a kingdom of peace. So Jesus, I ask for Your peace to be poured out, to rain down, to fill hearts, to fill minds. I ask for peace in families right now, peace in marriages right now, peace in workplaces right now. God, where all the details are yet to be worked out, that in our heart we know that You are King and You bring peace. So we receive it in Jesus' mighty Name. And we all said, Amen.